finally, the rock has come back. What is up, everybody? It has been a long time. I'd like to say uh, thank you to all my new subscribers, even though I have not been pumping out videos in quite some time. Uh, those that had watched my most recent videos, you knew that I was going sort of in a different direction in life due to the fact that old cars cost a lot of money. So, I have some stuff that I've picked up for like Black Friday and um, like some figures, if you will. So a couple of stat. Well, I'll just show you one statue in this video and then I've got another video coming. I finally completed... A, uh, not a run, but um, uh, a collection, if you will, of books. Uh, every different like variant that you could get of this one book, I completed that, finally. So, um, anyways, let me get down to uh, what I have to show, and then I've got one Golden Age book that we'll be talking about in detail uh, that I recently acquired. And I uh, got it for a good price, and it's sort of the basis, if you will, of how this one character really got up and running, yes and no. So let me move some stuff around because the statues are big. So the uh, first thing I want to show you is the 12-inch Deadpool that I just picked up. I just bought this online at GameStop, and uh, it cost me $18.49. This was like a $50, $60 figure whenever it first came out. Uh, I now have Captain America and Iron Man. I picked those up for like 13 bucks a piece at Walmart on clearance. But really happy to add this 12 inch uh, figure to my collection. And let me move it out of the way. It's got multiple heads, it's got two different heads. It's got uh, different guns, hands, uh, chimichanga. So really glad to uh, Add that 12 inch figure. I don't know if I'll take it out of the box or not. So, like I mentioned, I got uh, this from GameStop. And this one has already been opened. I'm sure it was on display, so uh, it is an incredible Hulk figure. It's just like that Iron Man uh, figure that I opened up the, the uh, video with. This one, he cost me $22.49. These deals may still be available at GameStop, I'm not sure. Uh, so go online, check them out, and uh, let me open this figure, though, and show you what's in it. Okay, so here is the figure, or statue, if you will, in all its glory. It looks like it's probably nice chesticles right there. Ooh. Um, it looks like it might need to be dusted. I bet this was on display at a uh, GameStop. Um, maybe the one if you order it. It'll be brand new in the box. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm not buying it for its collectability. I just thought it was a really cool statue uh, for not a whole lot of money. I mean, 22 bucks for that really cool Hulk uh, statue. I'll take it. Wrap it up. So let me move uh, the statue out of the way. He will be going on display uh, with my Iron Man uh, statue that you saw earlier. Y'all know I'm a huge Iron Man fan. Those of you that have watched my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm an Iron Man fan, so uh, they'll be going somewhat side by side or on the opposite ends here or something like that. So let's move to the comic books, though. The moment you've always been waiting for. Okay, so I'm showing you these books that are key uh, books just to segue into the next key book. Uh, this is Knight Rider number one from 1974, and it is graded in a 9.0. It's a Gil Kane and Tom Palmer cover. It's Silver Age Ghost Rider's name changed to Knight Rider. I'll have some more information about that uh, shortly. I also have Marvel Spotlight number five uh, from 1972, and this is the origin and first appearance of Ghost Rider, a.k.a. Johnny Blaze.
So why am I showing you this? I recently picked up for $100 and I had 10% back so it was for $90. This book right here. This is Tim Holt number 11. <laughs> So, this is Tim Holt, number 11, from 1949, and it's uh, published by Magazine Enterprises. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, some of the conditions on the book here shortly, uh, but this is the introduction of the Ghost Rider. I'm having to voice over this because I screwed up. Uh, my, I have a beard, and it was really scratchy, so I'm trying to clear up that scratchiness. Anyways, um, so, Tim Holt, number 11. This is really the basis for what we know about Ghost Rider today or, you know, where he began at. So I'll take this book out of the wrapper. You see that it's missing a little bit of the corner there. There's some rust on the staples there. Uh, but I'm fixing to open this book and uh, let y'all look at all the interior pages. So um, let's get cracking. So taking it out of its bag, let's look at the back. Uh, you can see a little bit of the rust from the staples, and then you can also see the chunk out of the corner missing, but it doesn't affect the story. The book is complete. I'm hopeful to get around a 1.5, 2.0 on this book. I'd be happy with that. It still displays really well. So, uh, let y'all look at the interior. Phantom Rider is the name of several fictional characters, Old West heroic gunfighters appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character was originally called Ghost Rider, and was renamed following the introduction of Marvel's motorcycle riding character called Ghost Rider. Marvel's first Ghost Rider look was based on Magazine Enterprises character Ghost Rider Rex Fury, created by writer Ray Crank and artist Dick Ayers for editor Vince Sullivan in Tim Holt No. 11 from 1949. The character appeared in horror-themed western stories through the run of Tim Holt, Red Mask, and A1 Comics up until the institution of the Comics Code. After the trademark to the character's name and motif lapsed, Marvel Comics debuted its own near-identical horror-free version of the character in Ghost Rider No. 1, cover dated February 1967, by writers Roy Thomas, Gary Friedrich, and original Ghost Rider artist Ayers. The song, Ghost Riders in the Sky, a Cowboy Legend, being popular at the time inspired the comics. The song was also the inspiration for the magazine Enterprise's horror western comic book character, The Ghost Rider. With the introduction of Marvel's supernatural Ghost Rider in the 1970s, Marvel renamed its western Ghost Rider uh, first to the unfortunate Knight Rider, a term previously used in the southern United States to refer to members of the Ku Klux Klan in a 1974-75 reprint series, and then to Phantom Rider. At least five men have been the Phantom Rider, one of whom is active in modern day. The magazine Enterprise's library of characters, including its version of Ghost Rider, was reprinted by AC Comics in the 1980s. While the copyrights have lapsed due to non-renewal, AC renamed the Ghost Rider as the Haunted Horseman, due to Marvel having maintained the Ghost Rider trademark. So, what do y'all think? Cool Golden Age book, or not a cool Golden Age book? Cool, um, really sort of the origin, the origin of uh, the Ghost Rider. Even though the character had changed a little bit, it all started right here because the same guy that created uh, Dick Ayers, I believe, uh, that that created or did Ghost Rider in Tim Holt number eleven. Guess what? He got hired by Marvel, and guess what? Come back, the Ghost Rider. So, anyways, uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for another video that should hopefully be coming maybe uh, maybe next week. I don't know. Uh, but it'll be a, a key book, um, a key modern age book, and a big key for me. And finally, a, finally a completion to something I've been trying to complete for a long time. So, one of the greatest stories ever told. Bye-bye.